What's going on, you guys? My name is Ronnie. A lot of people know me from my YouTube channel as Dad Learns Money. Um, I'm 45 years old. I just turned 45 on November the 7th. I'm sorry, November the 27th, which was the day before Thanksgiving Day. Um, I've had this YouTube channel for years, but I actually started taking it seriously probably about a year ago. And I see that a lot of success within this past year, going from maybe 30 or 40 subscribers to now we're almost at 3,000. Um, I just got monetized into the YouTube partner program, but not fully monetized. I still haven't achieved all my watch hour times um, for the full uh, monetization where I could add ads. Um, so we're working on that. I think we're about less than a thousand um, hours. I plan to go into the new year to achieve that. But through the process, I've been making um, a significant amount of money just off my YouTube channel um, through digital products, through affiliate marketing, through services. I do coaching and mentoring services. And um, it's been fun. I'm doing this video because I've always wanted to do like vlogmas. If you don't know what vlogmas is, it's basically when all the YouTube channels, they commit to posting every single day on YouTube up to Christmas. And I think to all November, I'm going to attempt to try and do that. <laughs> um, and, but my videos are going to be super laid back and super raw um, because I can't add all that extra recording time on top of editing and all that stuff. So I'm just going to make them raw, not going to involve my editors and none of that stuff. I'm just going to press record and start talking. My question to you is what would you like me to make my vlogmas channel about? Um, do you want to see more behind the scenes stuff or would you like me to talk about more things uh, about how to make money the way I do in my business or you no, know, give me some things to do uh, or, or say, or some content to create um, until we figure that out or I figure that out. Uh, I just want to just, you know, give you guys a little insight about me and who I am. Um, I've had a hard life. All right. So to tell you my, my story, um, it could be long, uh, but I do want you guys to know who I am and connect with me, all right? Um, early childhood, my my parents got divorced um, when I was still in elementary school. I'd say I was probably between nine or 10 years old. Um, and it, my father left us uh, with me. My, I have uh, three sisters. And um, I'm the only boy. I say right about then, everything started to change. Um, I noticed it then. Me, myself, just like most of other kids who um, lose the presence of a father in their household, I started to act out. And I started getting into criminal activities and criminal behavior, hanging out with the wrong crowd. Um, I eventually ended up dropping out of high school. And um, during that time, I was very, very obsessed with hip hop and rap music. So uh, I truly believed that I was gonna make it in the rap industry. Um, I was in a group with my cousin at, at first and um, me and him connected with some other members and <laughs> we uh, went from a duo to a four man rap group which my cousin eventually left and started another rap group with another friend. And then we added in another member that was friend with us and we returned back to four. And for most of my uh, young adult life, I was pursuing rap music with those people. Um, we made it pretty far. We did a lot of things and had a lot of accomplishments, but we never quite got a record deal. Um, and I eventually went solo um, so I could, uh, see what it was like by myself. Again, I got pretty far 
even meeting the likes of people like Diddy and Outkast, um, Goody Mob, L.A. Reid, Babyface, Dallas, Austin. Um, down here, we have uh, a famous rapper called Pastor Troy. Um, I was mingling with all these types of people. Um, eventually, um, uh, I stopped doing that. Uh, and that happened when my first son was born. And um, I kind of like had to figure out something that was going to bring in some income. And I started working. And I started from the bottom of this retail store. Uh, and I'm from Macon, Georgia. I don't live in Macon now. But at the time, I was living in Macon, Georgia. And I started at this retail store. Didn't really care why I worked. I didn't want to work. I just knew I needed a job, something that would bring in some money. So I didn't really... I wasn't going into it. I was going to make a career out of it. I still kind of like wanted to be a rapper. I just knew I needed to make some money, right? So I got this job and I was just good at it. Before I knew it, um, I wasn't a manager or anything, but people were like treating me like I was when, even all the way down to the employees. Um, fast forward, this place, this store was the only store in Georgia. And it, that store went bankrupt because that location wasn't making any um, that much income to sustain itself in that in that location. And the district manager of the uh, company told me um, be, uh, while we was closing down the store and everything, he says, hey, we really like you. Um, there's no other stores down here. But if you come to Atlanta, um, I think you might have a bright future there. I can see you being assistant manager or store manager. So I had nothing else to do. <laughs> um, and if I lost my job, I was going to be struggling. Um, by this time, I had a real bad criminal history on my record, so it was hard to pass background checks. A, a good friend of mine got me that job and vouched for me, so I considered myself lucky to even get that. And um, my reputation... Um, from working at that job, um, I felt was important because if I started all over from scratch and making, uh, it would be hard finding something else. So I moved to Atlanta. Um, my my then girlfriend, who's now my wife, she didn't come with me. Um, I said I would go up there, find us a place and be working and send back money. And so I did that for some months and I achieved that goal. Um, they put me in a store in Georgia, <laughs> I mean, in Atlanta, um, which is the most hood place up there. <laughs> um, and I wasn't making a lot of money. They did give me a, a, a raise because the, you know, uh, the pay rate is different from Macon versus Georgia. Um, but I managed to save up and I found us a home, an actual house. And um, once I did that, I had money saved up and we got U-Haul trucks and I moved my uh, my then girlfriend, who's now my wife, up to Atlanta. And um, I just kept doing what I was doing. Um, I got even better at the job I was working at, um, eventually became assistant manager. Um, and then eventually got my own store, became a store manager. Um, and was doing so good, they was uh, they had uh, put me in a training program to become a district manager for this company. And um, all of a sudden, the entire company went bankrupt, not just this store, the entire company went bankrupt. And I had to hurry up and find a job. By this time, I had three boys. <laughs> um, so uh it was a whole lot more responsibility and me losing that job and the income that i was making um, was gonna really really um hit us hit us real hard my wife was not working she took care of the kids in the household and um so if i lost my job it would be no money coming in uh during the time when they was you know it's a process when a company goes bankrupt, they hire this company that comes in to liquidate everything. 
Um, so they and they tell you if you stay and help us liquid liquidate the store, we we'll give you this bonus. So I didn't have any other job at that time, so it just made sense. Um, so I stayed. While I was looking for a um, another uh, job, uh, I I got sick, um, and I got sick, and I was in the hospital for I don't know, <laughs> um, at least about four months. I was in the hospital, and um, when I got sick. Uh, no, I had insurance and everything, but it's not quite what I was making, and we eventually lost uh our 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 home. Um, I did end up getting well, and when I got well, they still honored my job, and it wasn't that much time left in closing down the company at this time. Um, but I went back to work, and I asked God to help me find another job. Um, and he did. Not only did he find me another job, he found me a job that was uh, better than the one I had that paid twice as much money. And um, I took it, of course. And when I took this job, uh, things started coming back. Uh, mind you, before before this had happened, while I was sick um, and and when I lost, uh, went back to work, and you Noah know, saying during that process I was sick. Uh, we lost our, we had lost our home, and you know we were living with friends and family. So this was just a, a like a lifesaver. I was able to get all my income back and everything, and and get our get us a new home and everything. And um, I worked there for a while, and. Uh, then COVID hit. So COVID hit, and at this job, the CEO got us all on a big virtual conference call session and said, hey, guys, we're not making enough money to pay all you salary workers, so effective immediately, you guys are you know, laid off. They didn't say fired, but they said laid off. And so we're going to keep our salaried managers and salaried employees and a select few of people. And if things change, we'll hire you to come. We'll, have, we'll call you to come back. Um, that is when a lot of things started to change real fast. Um, everything started unraveling. I lost my 401k from trying to keep up with bills. I ran through that. I ran through all my savings. Um, still at this time, I'm still so provider with this family still. And at this time, I not only have three boys, I have two extra girls. So it's five kids, my wife and myself that I'm taking care of. And um, uh, a car got repoed. I couldn't keep up the bill payments. Um, uh, utilities was a struggle to get cut on. I, internet and all that stuff was just, it was, it was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible. Um, and we eventually got evicted. Um, the sheriff came and knocked on our door and he told us we had to leave. And there was a team of people that, this uh this company had hired who our, our landlord had hired to come and put all of our stuff in these black trash bags and put all of our things on the street um i had zero money not only did i have zero money all of my credit cards were maxed out um all of our my bank accounts were maxed out and in the negative i was in like crazy debt crazy debt like wow <laughs> Um, so I didn't even have any money to get a U-Haul. I didn't have any money for storage and none of that stuff. So I um, I uh, was friends with some neighbors, and I asked them could I use their phone because I didn't even have we didn't even have cell phones. 
everything was gone. And I asked them, could I use their phone? And I made some desperate calls to some friends and they gave me enough to get a U-Haul to get started. And they paid a good friend, paid up the first two or three months of the storage. So um, uh, our car was gone and some friends from our church gave us a car and that's where we slept in our car. And during this time, I had my computer, not a laptop, you guys. I had a computer, uh, a desktop computer, and that was all I had. And that's what, how I began my search to make money online. I would take my big desktop computer and go to fast food restaurants because most of them have the free Wi-Fi. Um, and I would uh, either... Uh, sit in their dining room, <laughs> use their Wi-Fi, right? And try and figure things out. And that's when I stumbled upon digital marketing, all right? But during this process, I it was still learning. It's not like I stumbled upon digital marketing and all the money flew in. I still had to go through everything that you guys probably had to go through. I had to learn and see how it works and figure it out. Um, and during this process, we're still living in our car, still taking my kids to school, um, still asking friends and people, could we take showers? I remember um, when we had to use the bathroom, we didn't have tissue. So I would go to a restaurant, order some water through the drive through ask for a handful of napkins so we could go relieve ourselves. We had to do number one and number two in the woods. Um, we would uh, park our car in like Kroger parking lots or Walmart parking lots where it was safe or at a car wash or something like that where it was light so we could sleep without nobody walking up on us and robbing us. It was a pure nightmare. And I cried and cried, cried, cried many, many nights um, about this. But it was my motivation to Hurry up and figure out how to get some income in. And this is all still during COVID. There's nobody really hiring. Um, <laughs> everybody's suffering, not just me. Um, but I eventually figured out digital marketing. And I remember when I, uh, I got my first sale. And that changed the game. Um, so I tell you guys this story that anything is possible. I went from being, um, fast forward to the day, I went from being homeless to a homeowner and not just a homeowner, but a landlord. I now have properties that I rent out. I have properties that I Airbnb. Um, I went from having my car being repoed and having no car um, to now we all have a fleet of cars that we do tour with. Um, I'm thinking about starting a, like a Uber fleet. I've been di digging into that and stuff like that. Um, so life, life can um, change for the better. Um, I could not have done this, you guys. I could not have done that with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I couldn't have done it without God. I couldn't have done it without my wife being patient. I couldn't, I couldn't have done it with my children. Despite us going through this pure hell, my children were the best, coolest kids about it. Um, they, they, we, we were communicative and we talked them through it and they understood. And you guys, we also through our church, we had some good people in our church that supported us, um, as in any way they could. Right. So it wasn't all 100% bad. God would step in when we would need it, when, um, when we needed him the most. And uh, even when we didn't even know he needed him, we needed him. He, he was, he was there and he would help us. Um, so finding out digital marketing, you guys, um, and learning that I could make money online and, and learning where God, how God set all this up to maneuver me and put me in a position to where I would never have to go through that again has been um, a blessing. And, and even around these times around like Christmas, like I, I'm not saying this to brag, you guys, like this Christmas, like we ask our children what they want for Christmas and they'd be like, they don't know because they have anything. Like, and they mean it from the bottom of their hearts. They're like, well, whatever we get, it's fine. And we don't even have to do any, we don't even have to get any gifts. Our kids be like, why don't we like uh, get gifts for other people? Cause we just buy for them all year round. Um, they have clothes, they have shoes, they have every gaming system, they have TVs. Um, 
anything you could think of, they they already have. So they're more about like helping others. And uh, it's uh, the, my older boys remember what it was like. And, you know, we, we bless people that are going through similar or worse situations than what we're having. And that, you guys, um, is probably my biggest um, appreciation of my success to be able to bless other people, whether it be with my money, whether it be with my, my information and my knowledge and my expertise, with my wisdom, whether it be with my testimony, um, that is what I value the most, that uh, I overcame this and now I can help people. Um, I, I'll leave you guys with this quote. The reward is greater than the struggle, but the struggle is worth the reward. Listen, if you're one of those people that are suffering and you're struggling and you feel like you're trapped and there's no way out, let me be the first person to tell you that there is and you have the power to change your life and God has more for you um, than you could ever imagine. Um, but let me also tell you, it's not easy. Anything that is worth uh, fighting for comes with a price. And um, the, the thing... The thing is, you can't skip it because you have to go through that so that you'll be qualified for the success of it on the other side. And you're going to be grateful that you did suffer and go through that because now there's no fear. Now there's no no doubt. I know God got me. I know more about myself. I know I can do this. I know I can overcome the the hardest of challenges and obstacles and I, I know uh, there's a sun, <laughs> there's a light um, on the other side that the rain will not continue to rain. The sun will come from behind the clouds and it will shine on you. But you got to be faithful and not only be faithful, you have to put some work into your faith and you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe in God and you got to keep going. So. This is my first vlog this video. I want to start off like that. Maybe this will help and bless somebody and, and inspire somebody that you can do anything. And the Bible says you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. That's going to be my time, you guys. You stay blessed and I will see you on the other side of success.